Hello and welcome to The Softer Side. I'm your relationship coach, Shelley Carney. Today we're going to be talking about balance. In my uh, Instagram poster today, I equated balance and wellness equals success. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why that is and what makes that happen. But first, <laughs> but first, let's go to housekeeping. <laughs> Toby's taught me how to hit the little buttons now. <laughs> I just have to remember to do it. So I'm Shelley Carney, your relationship coach. This is Toby Yunus, our producer and my sidekick. And our moderators in the room are Jimmy Fast and Jason Yunus. If you would like to volunteer to be a moderator or just would like to contact me about the content in our videos, you can email me at thesofterside.info at gmail.com. <laughs> Let's get started with balance. When I'm talking about balance, I mean all areas of our lives are in balance and when they are in balance, they are rolling right along. When they're not, we notice it throughout our entire life because each system is connected to the other. So you can see here the four systems that I'm talking about are the physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional. What affects one system affects the next system. Let's start with the mental system. That covers your thought life, behavior patterns, beliefs, self-image, what you think about yourself, what's going on in your mind, that interior voice. Uh, you know, we have kind of two people inside of us, the one who just does things and the one who observes and comments on those things. So you might uh, be going along fine, having a great day, and then something bad happens or some mistake happens, and that interior voice kicks in and says, well, that really messed up the whole day, didn't it? And it has this back and forth conversation in your mind, and that is your mental system. Your emotional system includes your ability to identify your feelings. How am I feeling? Am I happy? Am I worried? Am I anxious? What's going on with me? And then being able to deal with those feelings, feel your feelings, and then move on. It also talks about your relationships with yourself and with other people, uh, especially giving and receiving love. So those love relationships are important to the emotional system. Your physical system covers not only your health and fitness, as well as your nutrition and how you're taking care of your body, but also your sleep habits, which affects your health, and those things that are physical within your life, tangible, like your finances and your material possessions. Your spiritual system can include anything from your self-development. I want to work on myself and become a better person, become more aware, become a uh, cosmocentric, uh, raise my level of awareness in the world. I want to be aligned with my purpose. I want to understand what my purpose in the world is and usually it's the thing that makes you feel the best when you do it uh, connection you want to have connection with your community maybe that's within a church or maybe that's within a community center maybe it's within a group on youtube when you get into the chat room and you talk with each other and you have that community going on that's within your spiritual system also communicating with god spirit or higher self it could be uh it does you don't have to be a religious person to have a spiritual system they're actually uh, religion is a tool of your spiritual system and it helps you communicate with God and if that's what helps you wonderful if that doesn't help you and you're not a religious person that's okay too you still have a spiritual system now why is balance important and here we have a picture of one side we have money and one side we have a heart or love love or money which one's more important well everything's important isn't it the mind and the body are not separate. What affects one affects the other. All these things are interconnected and that's why balance is so important. Say for example, I feel like I'm not making enough money. How does that affect me physically? Well, I don't have the things I want or need. 
mentally, I might feel bad about myself. I may have low self-esteem. Oh, I can't make enough money and I feel badly because I really should be contributing. And, and also that emotionally uh, kicks in to that nagging guilt. I wish I could make more money and support my family or worry. I'm not going to be able to pay these bills. What am I going to do? I have, I have no way out. And then spiritually, I'm unable to fulfill my purpose because I'm not making enough money to either give to the charity I want to give to or I don't have enough money to be able to free up enough time to work on a community project. Something is missing. So when you have one problem in one area, it continues to affect all areas of your life. If you're experiencing a mental system imbalance, what that might look like is you're having negative self-talk. Uh, you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, oh my God, would you please lose some weight? Look at how fat you are. We all probably do that, right? Um, that is an imbalance. We should be looking at ourselves and saying, you know what? You went to the gym today. Good for you. You know, you're losing weight and that's great. Negative self-image is just the same thing. It's, ah. Uh, I just wish I could handle money better. I'm so bad at money or I'm so bad at this or why can't I do better at that? Really a negative outlook on yourself. Uh, you might be stuck in poor choice patterns. That means, oh, well, I didn't go to the gym again today. I guess I'll have some potato chips. Well, <laughs> you got to figure out a way to get out of those stuck patterns and that's all in the mental system. Or you might be closed off from other people. You might be saying, you know what? I don't want, I don't want to deal with people anymore. I don't want to talk to people anymore. I'm just going to sit in my little cubicle and do my own thing. And I don't want to deal with that. That could be in your mental system and balance. In order to move towards balance, some of the things that you can do are reading, especially uh, self-help books, especially in those areas that you might need the most help in. Say that you and your spouse are having a lot of issues. Perhaps you want to get a book uh, by a leading expert, um, maybe a Mars and Venus book, something that's going to address those issues that you're having in your marriage and read that book and think about is there something I can learn from this that will help me? Is there something I can change that's going to help me move forward? Another thing that helps us move towards balance in the mental system is travel. It opens up our horizons. It introduces us to other ways of thinking, other ways of living, other cultures, uh, other foods, other things that are out there that we didn't know existed before. It really opens us up. And affirmations. Uh, affirmations such as the ones I've told you about in my Meditation for Men videos. Uh, those are wonderful at helping you to have that shift in your mental attitude. If you have an emotional system imbalance, what that might look like is that you're stuck in one emotion like anger. A lot of people who have to go through anger management exercises are are uh, stuck in anger and that's an emotional system imbalance or you might be sad all the time and you just can't move past it or you might find yourself being jealous of everybody these are things in your emotional system that just eat away at you and you can't move forward until you deal with them feel those feelings deal with them and then move forward you might feel numb or unable to feel happy, excited, or passionate. A lot of us go through that sometimes, especially if we're in a job or a relationship that is not fulfilling our purpose. Uh, we might just go through the motions and not have any feeling about it anymore. Uh, we might have unsatisfactory relationships. Um, that would be an emotional system imbalance. And that could be anything from, I don't feel like I'm passionate about this person anymore and I don't want to be in this relationship. It's just ho-hum. Or it could be a relationship that is very stressful and uh, it's causing you to want to get out. In order to move toward balance in the emotional area, it's important to seek and accept support that could be from a friend or a family member. It could be from an, a coach or um, your doctor. It could be uh, anybody that you feel has the answers to help you move forward in that area. Um, it's important to focus on the positives. Again, that's really good in the uh, affirmations and those meditation videos, helping you to uh, put the negatives aside and just simply focus on what I do have, what I'm grateful for, um, 
how lucky I am to have all of these things. And then I want more of that. Focus on the positives. And then self-care. A lot of us, uh, we focus so much on each other or our family members uh, taking care of them that we forget to take care of ourselves. We have to take care of ourselves first because our health has to be in good order for us to be able to help other people. To fill up our own cup before we can help fill up other people's cup. So take care of yourself in those things that you need. Maybe you need want to go to the gym uh, more often. Put that in your schedule. Or maybe you want to uh, meditate more often. Make sure you take time for yourself and do those things that are important. Get enough sleep. In your physical system, again, that sleep comes into here. <laughs> but uh, in your physical system, what an imbalance might look like is you're having unhealthy habits. Uh, you're not going to the gym like you want to. And uh, you're not eating healthy foods. You're, you're relying a lot on junk foods or eating out all the time. Maybe you're overweight or you're exhausted. And that's, or maybe you have some kind of uh, disease that you're dealing with and you're having to uh, work with your doctor on medications and, and things are out of balance with your health. The other thing could be that you're either underemployed or unemployed. You're not having enough money coming in, so you're unable to pay your bills. You're unable to get uh, those things that you want or need uh, by having enough money for that. So a physical system and balance. And a way to move towards balance in the phys physical system is, of course, exercise and nutrition. Um, everybody knows how to do that. And if you don't, there's amazing stuff online that can teach you more about that. Good sleep habits. Uh, as, as I've learned and I've told my children again and again, sometimes if you're having a really bad day, go to sleep and it'll look better in the morning. And it's very true. Uh, sleep's going to help you recover. Your body recovers. You, you can uh, let go of stress when you're sleeping well. Um, so it's important to focus on how do I get the best night's sleep possible. It might require you to, uh, if you're having insomnia or if you're having a lot of issues with sleep, you might need to look at perhaps going to a sleep lab, talking to your doctor about it, looking into a CPAP machine if you're having issues with breathing at night. So make sure you're getting good sleep. It's so important to your body. A budget. A budget can really help you, of course, uh, to not overspend to take a look at how much you are making and how possibly to bring in more and job satisfaction plays into that. So if you are satisfied with your job, you're going to want to do that job and you're going to probably be able to promote uh, throughout the company, get higher pay um, if you're satisfied and having a good time and enjoying your job. So that's important to move towards balance. A spiritual system and balance would include things like feeling disconnected from uh, your community, feeling disconnected in the world, feeling alone, having not not having a purpose, not understanding what your purpose is. Um, you don't have any specific belief system. Even if you're not religious, you're still going to believe in some things like a higher power or um, an energy source or uh, your higher self, self-improvement. Um, karma. There's a lot of things out there that you can hold on to as a belief system. And you might, if you don't have that belief system and you don't know what your purpose is, you may feel lost. You may feel worried and stressed. And these can all show you that you are imbalanced in your spiritual system. In order to move towards balance in that system, uh, you can do meditation or prayer. This is just basically a quieting of your mind and your uh, calming of yourself so that you can tune into your intuition and your instincts and find out what is it that I want out of life? What is my purpose? Uh, practice gratitude. So during meditation and prayer is a wonderful time to express gratitude just out loud or just to yourself saying, I'm so thankful for what I do have. You know, I have a wonderful family. I have a supportive husband. I have a, a job that's bringing me a little bit of money and I would like all of these things to be increased. I love what I have. And then uh, forgiveness is important to move towards balance spiritually. If you're holding on to grudges or uh, past 
relationships that hurt you, then if you uh, will learn to forgive and let go, you're going to open up your heart and open up your spirituality to receive more goodness to come your way. And then, of course, connecting with your community. And your community could be uh, where you live. It could be online. It could be uh, your church or it could be a group of people that you enjoy uh, hanging out with and doing positive things together. My recommendations for balance uh, in all of these areas, again, watch my videos. I have a brand new video out, just came out yesterday, on breathing techniques. The breathing techniques, there's three of them, and when you work your way through them, you become calmer, uh, more able to focus, and more able to visualize so you can visualize your future uh, more easily when you follow these breathing techniques before you uh, go into a meditation. I also have another video uh, called An Honest Man, which is really good about being honest with yourself, taking stock of uh, your, your, um, your core beliefs and who you are and are you being honest with yourself about what it is you want and what it is that you say and do. Uh, the second recommendation is chart your balance in all four systems. Think about each system, the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, and decide, am I out of balance in the physical area? And if so, pinpoint what that is, write it down, and think about how you could bring that back into balance. And do that for each of the four systems. Uh, find, find those ways that can bring you more balance in each system. Because when you balance out one system, all the other systems are relieved of that burden. And then you can focus on those systems as well. And when all your systems are in balance, you're headed towards success. Um, if you're having any issues uh, coming up with how to move towards balance in any of these areas, I would suggest additional coaching. Uh, you can contact me at uh, thesofterside.info at gmail.com for coaching, or uh, you can contact somebody in your area for that as well. Uh, there is a free ebook available to you. <clears throat> called The Secret of Letting Go and Starting Fresh. Um, this is going to cover some forgiveness exercises, which is really good for clearing that spiritual imbalance. And once you're on the mailing list, you'll, you'll continue to get emails with additional tips, tools, and techniques to help you find balance in all those areas. And that uh, link is at bit.ly slash TSS Let Go. And go ahead and uh, Request that ebook for yourself and uh, get started on that. Now we're going to get into the mini coaching demo between Toby and I. So we're going to talk about um, one area. Uh, we don't want to cover all of them because it would take too long, but we're just going to focus on one area that may be out of balance for Toby and how he can bring that back into balance. We're also going to discuss a little bit about how that one thing in that one area affects all areas of his life. So are you ready to get started? I am. Do you want to go back to full frame? Sure. Let's do that. <clears throat> All right, so um, let's think of an area of your life where you believe you're somewhat out of balance. Can you, can you name anything? So give me the four choices again, mm -hmm. the four areas. You have physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. Physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Well, I feel like there's a part of me that wants to eliminate the spiritual because of I don't think of myself as a spiritual person. And maybe that's a different conversation. Mm -hmm. um, but I do, uh, so I would say uh, of the three remaining, mm -hmm. I would say uh, the one that's, the one that's bugging me, mm -hmm. which would be an indication of imbalance right, right now, is every time about this year. Uh, mm -hmm. About I, this time of year? About this time of year, mm -hmm. yeah. I start thinking about the stuff, about stuff, right, that I have. And over the year, what, because of projects, because of interests, I accumulate stuff, 
Mm -hmm. And about this time, uh, I, it's certainly not a spring cleaning, because, but it always tr turns out right about the beginning of summer, I feel like I need to get rid of stuff. I feel like it's, you know, the house is filling up with stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's starting to feel, if it starts feeling cluttered to me. Mm -hmm. and, and then in addition to that, because it feels cluttered, because I always seem to be looking for things. Right, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. because part of the clutter is some sense of disorganization as well, mm -hmm. and uh, I tend to be a organized an organized person who doesn't like a lot of clutter. So literally, about uh, this time every year, I start feeling like there's a lot of clutter, and then I suppose uh, that creates additional problems in the other areas. Right. Okay. So yeah. you've talked about the physical area. The problem is too much stuff and it causes you to be unable to find the things that you're looking for yeah. and it gets in the way. Uh, there's, there's things you have to work your way around physically. So let's talk about, um, how it, how it impacts your life mentally and emotionally. Well, the, the the mental part, uh, the mental part, of course, is that inability to. I seem to spend a good part of my day looking for things. Mm -hmm. I can't remember where I put them. I, I spent, uh, I don't know, was it yesterday or the day before, uh, looking for uh, our camera batteries mm -hmm. for for that shoot that we were going to do at U Public, and my camera batteries are always in one place and. Mm -hmm plastic container inside a plastic container along with mm -hmm. uh, the uh, charger for those uh, for those uh, Lumix batteries and could not find them. Struggled with that and to the extent that sooner or later you start going like, well, maybe somebody took my batteries, you know. <laughs> right. I don't misplace my batteries. They're my batteries, but somebody definitely came into the house and took the batteries. <laughs> and, and, and I think that creates that kind of mental anguish. I don't actually mm -hmm. believe that. Mm -hmm. But it's you start feeling like right. this is way too much time spent. I mean, it, it took me an hour, more than an hour, mm -hmm. to find the batteries. Mm -hmm. And they were in a place that I had put them when I was moving clutter around mm. stuff around so that I would get it out of the way temporarily and I think that's that other byproduct of the clutter thing is you start putting stuff away and then out of out of or out of uh, archive order right batteries go with batteries chargers go with chargers cables go with cables but in, when you're rushing around one day like that I just need to get out of the way so I can do this next step mm -hmm. and that's the other thing I noticed is that that when you start a new step and you don't finish by cleaning up that step, right? Uh, then the next thing you do, that, that last step becomes an obstacle. And so the mental, and I don't want to say it's anguish, I'm not, I'm not losing sleep over this, but it, it is bothersome enough sure. so that you're distracted, mm -hmm. right? There, there's a mental distraction that you have to deal with as a result of that. And how does that make you feel emotionally? Um, because I tend to be, I'm probably obsessive compulsive in my nature and I like neatness and clutter it to me is not neat and it, and it creates a lot of other not neat problems, right? It's disorganized. It creates additional disorganization. It leads to frustration because of the disorganization, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so it has all these, uh, byproducts, both mental and, um, emotional uh, because I'm not necessarily an angry person but I do get frustrated right. and I guess frustration is mm -hmm. is an emotion that somebody could uh, and should and may experience so does it change how you feel about yourself when you can't find things or when there's too much clutter or maybe you have too much stuff do you find that you're regretting having that stuff having well, purchased it's, it it's, so it's two things actually mm -hmm. uh, so one is um, having the stuff mm -hmm. uh, because you know as well as you know from my behaviors we'll look at a problem and if I can get on Amazon and solve the problem <laughs> I get on Amazon and solve the problem background yeah <laughs> background right yeah. so now every time we set up for Shelley we've got to deal with that background it's got to be stored someplace and that doesn't bother me but someday what's going to happen is we're going to say oh we found out a way to make that a digital background or another mm -hmm. so now mm -hmm. I got to deal with a room divider that is not big enough 
that, that is more, I mean, it's a seven panel room divider. I'm never going to need that again. So it adds to that stuff. Eventually it migrates. So it stays in closets for a mm -hmm. while and then it migrates out to the garage and then mm -hmm. the garage gets full and, um, and I've got to do something about that as well. Right. So, so the first frustration is just the evolution of the collection of clutter based on stuff that I needed for a moment in time. And then the other thing that I have to deal with emotionally is that I'm always interested in learning. So I mm -hmm. wanted to learn how to make my own bread. Mm -hmm. Well, that involved going to Bed Bath & Beyond and buying all the stuff mm -hmm. uh, that one needs to make bread. And in two months, I'll be through my bread making phase. And now I'm stuck with all the stuff that one needs to make right. bread. So the, so the two things, one is the collection and acquisition of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's not... It's not a financial thing. I can afford it. I mean, it's not like I'm spending my child's, you know, college money to do this. Uh, so that's the first thing. And then the second thing is the part where you go like, I just spent a whole bunch of money, you know. And now you want to hold on to that item because it costs money. Well, I, I, I no, I, I'm actually very good at letting stuff go. Okay. I'm, I'm actually very good at letting stuff go. Uh, but the frustration is... Uh, you know, you know as well as I do. Several months ago, I went through a phase where I needed to understand microscopy, microscopy, and I put twelve hundred bucks into understanding my microscopy, including buying a seven hundred dollar microscope, and uh, and I got through that phase, learned everything that I needed to do, took pictures, made movies, did that stuff, and then I went, oh, okay, so that's what that's what that's about. Mm -hmm. So now I have $1,200 worth of microscope equipment, microscopy equipment, that is taking up space that I'll never recover. I'm, I'll be lucky to get a third of that investment back. And so the fact that you spent all that money instead of saying, going to visit your grandchildren in Boca Raton, um, uh, you know, can can lead to both mental and emotional stress. Sure. So sure. Uh, let's see if there's anything spiritually that it's affecting. Uh, so, your core purpose, in part of your core purpose, I believe, is that you like to live light. You don't like a lot of things weighing you down. If you wanted to say, close up shop, leave in town, you could do that very easily so it seems to me this kind of gets in the way of that core purpose does that sound logical to you i hadn't i hadn't thought about it in that way but yeah i i i treasure my independence and, and my freedom and those are two very different things uh freedom is the the i don't know who said it there's probably some movie spy that said you know you got to be ready to make a change in 30 seconds you got to be make that decision to be gone in 30 seconds and I've kind of always adhered to that after after raising my family, of course. But um, I that so that's that sense of freedom and independence that I really like. There's no pets in this house. There's no plants in this house. There's no <laughs> pool outside like in the old days, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Those are all elements of freedom. And the more stuff you collect, the the more you're attached to, you know, the mm -hmm. more the more preventative preventive that stuff is from achieving your sense of freedom and independence. Um, not to mention that then you, like I said, fill a garage full. So my garage is, is kind of different from most people's garage. I don't put my car in there. I build shells and I organize everything in plastic containers. And after a while, you <laughs> run out of space and you're going like, um, I don't need more plastic containers. I need to get rid of the stuff that I have. So Now, I've noticed that about you, that you do get to the point where you solve the problem. So talk to me about how you solve that problem, how you become more balanced in this area. Well, for me, it's always, not, it's always about not just complaining about it, but doing something about it. And so about this time every year, I start making a collection in the garage, and that collection... Um, is divided into two areas, stuff that I can sell on Craigslist just to get out of it because it's a big thing. And then what remains, and it's not very much actually because you find out, you, you, and, and you have to do this without the expectation that you're going to recover all that you spent. Mm. You're not going to even come close, right? So you have to accept that part. So some of it goes to Craigslist, and then what I do is I plan a uh, day at the flea market, the, the Albuquerque flea market over there at the uh, state fairgrounds. And I pack up my truck and 
pack up my canopy and pack up my table and I go to the flea market and I wheel and deal for a day and and I actually love flea market. I love that. I love wheeling and dealing. And so it's fun for me. I get a rid bunch of the stuff. And then what's left, uh, which generally isn't a lot, I drive straight over to the uh, Goodwill store and I drop everything else off there. And in that kind of week of Craigslist, flea market, and Goodwill, mm -hmm. uh, I release myself of all those connections and I can go on with another year of acquiring new stuff. And how, does, how do you feel during the process and then after it's done? So the process for me, the whole process of wheeling and dealing is very rewarding. I like that, whether it's Craigslist or uh, flea market, it's less, of course, rewarding when you go to the Goodwill, but then I feel good about having taking things that are useful uh, because I give it all. I mean, there's there's stuff there. This isn't like my bottle cap collection, mm -hmm. right? This right. is good, useful stuff. Um, I just, as the whole bread thing went on, I realized I had to clean out my kitchen. I had more stuff, you know, kitchen stuff than I was ever going to use in this lifetime. Uh, so part of it is it's very, um, it's very refreshing, the, you know, I, I'm going to hesitate to use this word, but I'll say it's spiritually refreshing right. for me to go through that process of, you know, accepting that it's time to do something about it, mm -hmm. then doing the Craigslist posting and then taking whatever it is and planning a day at the flea market because you do have to plan it and then getting up at, I don't know, it's like you have to get up at six o'clock in the morning, <laughs> which is not my idea of a good day, <laughs> and then spending the day at the flea market getting sunburned but selling stuff and meeting people and talking to people and negotiating and, and doing all that. And then there's there's this moment of like, okay, that's what's left. Let's go to Goodwill. Mm -hmm. And just driving up to the door at Goodwill and letting those guys unload it. And it's funny because they always offer me a receipt so that for tax purposes they go, eh, eh. <laughs> the, the, the goodness is already done. And that is I can drive home and there's less stuff in my house and there's less stuff in my garage. And then I can decide what I want to do next with my, you know, mm -hmm. so what area I want to explore do next. Do you feel um, more freedom when you see that empty space and that, that uh, lack of clutter? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it's funny because I probably have never just stood there, you know, <laughs> super like, you know, like, oh, I'm free again. I've never thought of it but quite in that way, but it does. I mean, when you, the, the less clutter you have, whether it's physical or emotional, uh, or mental, the less clutter you have, the more independent and free you are. And I think that, I just made up my own rule there, basically. Um, the more free you are to do other things that are your choices, and uh, that includes developing new relationships, new interests, all, all of those things. Mm -hmm. So, you know... Um, it's like physically clearing out your past, just like if you wanted to uh, clear out your past uh, angst, bad relationships, anything that you're ready to release that's in your past, now you have space. Well, I guess now I could apply that to all the things that we've talked about in terms of letting things go, mm -hmm. right? So our, our first conversation was about my concerns, my personal concerns about my appearance. So the more... Uh, I'm going to apply some Shelley information here. So <laughs> Yay! The more, uh, so it seems to me that based on the conversation that we had last week, the conversation we're having now, is that if I can let go of those concerns about my appearance, it, it actually creates a whole new sense of freedom and independence because I'm not connected to that. I'm not tied to it. It's like a ball and chain, right, that, that's holding you back. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, Perhaps the, the lesson here is that I need to look at those other things besides the collection of physical things, those other things that are holding me back and, uh, and figuring out a way to let them go, you know, dropping that off a cliff or, or taking my hang up about my appearance back over to Goodwill, <laughs> you know, and uh, so saying, you guys can keep this. Yeah, you guys, you guys can have this because you know what? I look like Eric Estrada. So. That's right. <laughs> Troy said so. So, yeah. <laughs> So uh, so I, I think that's a good lesson in that uh, if your objective in life is that sense of freedom and the sense of independence uh, that you've, you've wanted for most of your life, you know, when you're married and having children, you have to give up a lot of that. And, and it's not regretfully, you just have to. 
Uh, and so as you get older, where you, you can start acquiring those freedoms and those independences, if that's a word, um, the more you let go of things connected to the past. And, and the nice thing about is is if they are spiritual things or mental things or emotional things, they're not going to cost you money. The physical things cost you money. The other stuff pretty much doesn't cost you money to, to let it go. Well, you know? I, I, there might be some things, but I can't. Yeah, not a lot. Yeah. Not a lot. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Uh, let's go to the chat room, and I would like to ask you the same question. Is there an area in your life that is out of balance, and what would that be for you? So I didn't see, uh, I didn't see any chat, so Uh-oh. I think we're okay. Are we all out? Did anybody come, up? Yeah, come we by? Did. Uh, we had four people watching, yeah, they oh. came by. Did they all leave? I wonder, you know what, I Are didn't we... see an announcement go out. I wonder if... Uh, did we are we even yeah we're live live <laughs> no that's the live that's the live stream there and there indicates that there are four people watching okay we made a good recording. well if anybody's in the chat would you let us know say hi yeah um, nothing else just say hi because so rick we're wondering says hello from there. cincinnati okay <laughs> there is somebody good. there so people rick, are did there. you get a notification that we were going live because uh because i feel like a notification didn't go out Hmm. Well, I I wouldn't because it's my channel, but yeah. Anyway, okay. So, if you do have areas in your life that are out of balance, write them down, think about them, and then think about how you can bring them into balance. Uh, this is going to help you to achieve wellness throughout your entire life, and you'll be able to find that freedom and that independence that will lead towards success in those things that you do want um, by letting go of those things that you no longer need, no longer serve you. So uh, why don't we go ahead and at this point we will finish up. Do you have more slides that you need to I do to? have a few more. Okay, go ahead. There we go. Uh, so go ahead and take just a moment to like this video with a thumbs up, share it with your social media contacts and your friends, and let them know that this live coaching is available to them on Thursdays. Subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications whenever we go live or put out a new video. And I do put out videos on Tuesday, Wednesday, and live on Thursday. So I hope that you will subscribe for those. Uh, we also have that free ebook available for you, The Secret of Letting Go and Starting Fresh. And all you have to do to get that free ebook is click on that link, and that's going to be in the description box below this video as well. Bit.ly slash TSS Let Go. Once you're on that mailing list, you'll be receiving tips, tools, and techniques to help you with further balance and wellness throughout your life, which can lead to success. Uh, coming up in a couple of weeks, we're going to start something new called The Softer Side After Dark. And we are going to address married men's number one complaint. Do you know what that is? Number one complaint of married men. Toby's uh, been married a couple times. Number one complaint? Yeah. Uh, the You have the air conditioner too low. <laughs> well... After uh, research of much, <laughs> many men and the married men, uh, we have found out that it's not enough sex. Their yeah. number one complaint, not enough sex. Yeah, so we're going to address that. That's probably more than the air conditioning. Thing. And we're going to talk about that on the softer side after dark on Thursday, July 5th, starting at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, what we would like to do is if you have questions or complaints about not enough sex in your marriage, write to us at thesofterside.info at gmail.com. And I will read that on that show. Um, if you'd like to remain anonymous, just let me know. And uh, I will not read your name. I'll just read your comment or your question on that show. And we appreciate that uh, because we want to get 
not only your questions answered, but when you ask a question or have a complaint, then I'm sure many, many other people have that same question or complaint as well. So you're helping other people by doing that. So again, send your questions or comments to the softer side.info at gmail.com. And that's going to start in two weeks, um, July 5th, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. So I hope to see you there at that. Thank you so much for watching today and for the softer side. I'm your relationship coach, Shelly Carney. Mm -hmm.